up. It is bones. And let's go ahead and take a look at some custom work that I have done. Now, I've been wanting to build a classic Aquaman for a while. Not necessarily that I didn't have the parts to do it because I did. It's just if you know me, I won't do custom work for a while and then I'll just start busting out custom <laughs> custom work, you know, uh, out of nowhere. But I have been sitting on this project. I did have the parts that I needed and I just needed, you know, the motivation to get through it. Now, this is based off of the Endless Winter Aquaman, but I do want to make a more classic looking version. But we'll go ahead and look through it. Check out the inspiration for this figure and a little bit of how to on how I did a couple of the little details. But first off, to start off, I did use the Endless Winter Aquaman as a base body. Now, I do like this Aquaman figure. He comes with this pretty nice trident. But of course, he is a more modern interpretation of Aquaman with the long hair and the beard. But what I wanted to do was actually make a more traditional version of Aquaman, which is something we saw in DC Universe Classics. Now, this is the old school version of Aquaman where he has the black trunks and the yellow belt. So when I combine these two figures, it's pretty much how I got my custom. Now, the, of course, the head is widely known because a lot of people have been using it. It is the Flash Gordon head from NECA. Now, they do sell a pack that actually has one figure and an alternate head. And since I did have two of these, I was going to have an extra Flash Gordon head floating around. So that's when I decided to use it for this figure. But let's go ahead and get down to the details now. I started off with the head, popped them off. Now the first problem I ran into was that both the Endless Winter Aquaman and the NECA Flash Gordon come with the same style of peg, which is like a large ball and then a smaller ball on the other end. But both the head and the neck port for these figures have actually large ball pegs. So what I needed to do was actually combine these two pegs to make one with a large ball on each end and then of course i would have to adjust for the height of the head so i started by warming them up and splitting them in half once you do that i take the smallest drill bit that i have it's very small and of course i drill a hole on either end of the peg now once you do this you do have two large ball pegs with holes drilled into either end now you will need something to connect these with. It just depends what you want to use. I you traditionally use like some hard plastic that is like my own secret little connection that I usually use. But for this one, I just decided to use just a random like nail that actually has ribs in it. It just made it a lot easier for me. So I put this in one end and then I put the ball peg into the head and now you can see that I have the connection, but the bad part is that it is really too high. And this is where you really have to be careful. You start cutting down the peg until you reach the height that you want. And it's very tricky. You gotta make sure it's exact because if you go too far, the head is gonna sit way too low on the body. So finally, when I got it, you know, just where it sits right on the neck and looks really good the last thing i did was heat up all the parts put a dab of super glue on the actual nail and then squish it together that way the nail has super glue in it and it actually drives in a little bit into the plastic of the peg and then i just left it for a couple of days now after you let it sit it retains the articulation which is the best part you could move the head around with no worries that the peg is going to pop off. Now, once I got the head sitting right where I wanted, I did notice that the neck paint was really pale, while the head for the neck of Flash had a pink hue to his skin tone. So I kind of wanted to match the head to the neck. You could decide either way, match the 
face to the neck or vice versa but i just went with changing the neck color because i kind of wanted to add some higher like pinkish tones where there was like muscle tone and stuff like that so to give it a little bit of life and give it different colors in the neck i just went with painting the neck but i did mix up i think it was a matte coral which is kind of like a pinkish color and then a gloss mocha tan and when you mix these two together you get kind of a satin skin tone and from there you can add on different hues like yellow white even some brown to darken it up and it does take practice but once you get proficient at it you can match pretty much any skin tone so i got that the way i wanted it so i was happy with that and then we moved down into the trunks now the trunks from the endless winter aquaman were just green but of course i wanted to go for the classic old school aquaman trunks which were black with a yellow belt this is of course is showcased in the dc universe classic version of this figure so i did uh, remove the trunks and then paint them let them dry as well for a day or two and then slip everything back together so now we have them all put together the neck ahead the paint tones on the neck the trunks and he is pretty much complete so now once it is all said and done he is an awesome figure you can still articulate him there's nothing wrong with moving him around what i really like is that now that the head has enough time to dry you could really look down he looks up pretty much at full range you got right to left and of course you could tilt his head for some character and you could get the full range of motion in this head the the neck paint matches perfectly just a really classic cool looking aquaman trust me if you had this guy in your hands you'd want to be posing him around and <laughs> and you know not putting him down but looks really good uh really happy with him this wasn't a very large project but if you know me you know that i really don't like to do characters that mcfarlane might make in the future because then you know you pretty much worked on this figure and it's for nothing because mcfarlane comes out and releases a classic version but one thing I do have is I do have a contingency plan and I have a plan for this figure if McFarlane ever releases a classic Aquaman. I have a different version of Aquaman that I'm going to do with this body. So all is not lost. I do have a back door to get out of this. But for right now, he's a really cool, classic looking Aquaman. Now, of course, he needs his trident to go with him. And I kind of wanted to use the Endless Winter one. But since he's a more classic look, I wanted to go with the old school DC Universe Classics Trident. Now, luckily, I have various extras of these from when I used to do customs on DC Universe Classics. But I did want to change it up. So what I ended up doing was painting it with a really high kind of mirror gloss gold. And if you put the two tridents together, you could kind of see a bit. Uh, you know, in your hand, you could really see that this trident has really glossy gold color to it and just gives it a bit of a regal feel for this classic Aquaman. So all in all, I'm really happy with him. Like I said, it wasn't a lot of work, but when I was done with it, I, he is fun to pose around and of course put in different setups. Now, that is when I did start bringing out my Justice League lineup which of course will include Batman. Then you bring your classic Superman. This of course is my custom. You bring in your Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And then your Wally West Flash for the background. And of course, my modded Martian Manhunter. Just look at the height on him. He's taller than all of these figures, but I had to mod him to make him taller. But that classic look just looks awesome with all of these figures. But anyways, guys, in the end, some pretty fun custom work to do on this guy. 
he looks pretty cool on his own or pretty cool in a Justice League lineup. But you guys keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one. Call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.